When Christianity first appeared as a force in the Roman Empire, it was perceived as a dangerous belief system and one that was incompatible with the imperial structure. I mean, for example, if you can't worship the emperor, how can you possibly be a Roman citizen? As historian Will Durant points out, quote, On its side, the church resented the Roman idea that religion was subordinate to the state. It saw in emperor worship an act of polytheism and idolatry and instructed its followers to refuse it at any cost. The Roman government concluded that Christianity was a radical, perhaps a communist movement, subtly designed to overthrow the established order. End quote. So the Romans felt threatened by this religion, and the members of the early Christian church were moral absolutists. I mean, they didn't bend at all. And being an outsider allowed them to do that. They didn't have to make the compromises that they would later have to make as part of trying to make things work. They could afford to take, you know, the high road and denounce all those who took anything lower. When you read, for example, the early history of the church martyrs, it is astounding how those people would stick by their beliefs and refuse to compromise on even the slightest aspects of it in order to avoid sometimes the most horrible fates you can think about. You go and read what happened to these martyrs, and, you know, proverbially they're thrown to the lions, but all kinds of other things were done too. Just the most horrible things, right, to these early martyrs. And what's not often realized is how often the Romans tried to make it easy on these people to avoid a horrible fate, right? Instead of throwing them to the lions, we'll let you get out of it. All you got to do is make a little concession. And they weren't talking about getting out of it with, with an easier death. It wasn't like, we can throw you to the lions, which will be horrible, or we can cut your head off, which will be nice and quick. They were saying, we can throw you to the lions, which will be horrible, or we can let you go and not bother you anymore. All you have to do, you know, one of the things that they would say, all you have to do is just a little something to worship the emperor. It can be just, you know, a little tap dance. I mean, it doesn't have to be anything major. It's just, just for show. And when you read the writings of some of these emperors actually explaining how the procedure is to be carried out, it looks like they want these people to get off without the ultimate punishment. Not surprising either if more and more of your empires becoming Christianized makes you look like a bad guy to be, you know, killing their brethren. Nonetheless, um... You know, more and more of these people would find themselves in situations where they wouldn't budge an inch morally. Much rather go to the lions or have your skin torn off you in front of a howling crowd. That's the part you forget. It's not just a horrible death. It's a horrible death with a lot of people, you know, cheering on whatever it is is about to eat you alive. So we're going to mock you and make it extra bad at the end. The Romans were good at these things. And even in the rare cases where, you know, they actually want these people to, you know, not get the ultimate fate because it's bad for everything in the empire and keeping the peace and all that, these Christian martyrs would not cooperate and often went smiling and singing to their deaths. It's, it's one of the amazing cases in history of people standing up for their beliefs. These people were religious fanatics. Make no mistake about it. By modern standards, they were religious fanatics. But they were religious fanatics for peace which again is a, is, is a strange concept. We think about religious fanatics today as being you know, dangerous in a blow you up kind of sense. Well, these people would never have blown anyone up. As a matter of fact, killing was against you know, their rules of existence. But make no mistake about it, the Romans considered them dangerous. The Romans considered them dangerous because their ideas would undermine the entire Roman system. One of the main concerns in early Christianity is when it starts catching on in the state, the Romans are worried about the army. Like any empire throughout history, the army is what allowed it to come into existence in the first place and what maintained its existence afterwards. What happens if some radical, perhaps communist, uh, historian Will Durant uses a modern word, but you understand what he means. Um, you know, what happens if that mentality sweeps through your soldiery and all of a sudden they start believing this idea that they're going to burn an eternal hellfire if they kill their enemy? One of the fascinating things about early Christianity is reading how the church has to change when it becomes the dominant force in society instead of an outsider. When it can't just criticize from afar, but has to actually, you know, run a state with human beings and all of the messiness that comes with that. This is what happens when Christianity first goes from being a 
you know, protected religion under Constantine to the state religion less than 100 years after that. And human beings being what they are, Christians went from being persecuted to not being persecuted to then having ultimate power in the state and deciding to persecute pagans in almost the same way they themselves were persecuted. We are funny creatures, aren't we?